Hi, Ms. Jones, welcome uh, to the clinic. And um, I'll, I'm Dr. Gastfriend, and I'll be doing your intake interview today. I, uh, I'm glad you were able to come in in person to do this. And um, I'm going to ask you a whole series of questions. And uh, we'll start out with just some general things, but then we're going to get into some depth. Um, and we could be here, um, could take a couple hours. If it takes too long and you need to interrupt, just let me know. Okay, we can even do this over the course of a couple days if we need to. Um, how long have you been living at your current address, by the way? Mm, about two years. Okay. And um, do you own the residence where you live? No, it's uh, owned by my boyfriend. Okay. Um, have you been uh, living there out in the community uh, in the past 30 days or in a controlled environment like a hospital or... No, no, I've just been living there with my boyfriend. Okay. Um, have you been in any kind of rehab or uh, uh, a contained facility like a, a jail at all in the last 14 days? No, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a whole series of medical questions. Stop me if you've had any of these problems, okay? Neurological or seizure or fits problems, ophthalmologic or eye problems, ear, nose, or throat problems, dental, tooth, or gum problems, cardiovascular, like heart circulation, heart attacks, or hypertension? Uh, yeah, I, I got the high blood pressure. Okay. Um, pulmonary, lung, or asthma problems? No. Digestive, stomach, bowel, liver, pancreas, or diabetes problems, or urinary or bladder? Uh, I was once hospitalized for gallbladder. Okay, all right. I'll ask you about that um, a little bit more. How long ago was that? Yeah, it was about three years ago. Okay. And um, do you have any chronic medical problems that continue to interfere with your life? Well, I I've had these terrible headaches all my life. You do? Okay. All right, that's important. Um, are you pregnant? I hope not at my age. All right. Do you have any sexually transmitted diseases? Oh, no, I doubt that. Okay. Um, is it, do you have any chance of TB, tuberculosis? Mm. No, nothing like that. Okay. Do you take any medications? Well, I take medication for my headaches. Okay, tell me what you take, please. I take that Oxycontin, I think like 10 or 20, 20 milligrams, something like that for, for the pain of my headaches. Okay, how often do you take those? Uh, kind of whenever I need to. Okay. Um, do you take them once a day, twice a day? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. All right. Um, do you take any abuse or... Um, Disulfiram medication, like for alcoholism? I don't even know what that is. Okay. Um, all right. And do you receive any kind of disability or pension? No. No, I, I work full time. Okay. Um, how many days have you had medical problems, like your headaches or hypertension, in the last 30 days? Oh, at least half the time uh, okay. I got the headaches. Okay. Um, all right. Um, if I ask you about sound, we have some thunder outside um, today. Um, are you more aware of sounds around you? Are they harsh? Do they frighten you? Are you hearing anything that's disturbing to you or things that you know aren't there? Yeah, I get that. Even today I have it. Okay. Um, how about light? Does uh, light seem to be too bright, or is the color off? Does it hurt your eyes? Are you seeing anything that's disturbing to you, or things that you know are not there? Well, when I get the bad headaches, light really bothers me, kind of like now. You do, okay. Um, what day is this? Can you tell me the day today? Yeah, it's uh, Sunday, March 31st. Okay. Good. And um, where are you? 
I'm at the clinic. Okay, and who am I? And you are Dr. Gastfriend. Right, and can you take seven and add seven to it and then keep adding sevens to each answer? Tell me each answer. So seven plus seven is? Well, it's like elementary school again. Let's say 14. And, and seven. And that's 21. Keep going. Uh, 28. Uh, 35, 42, 49. Good, okay, great. Um, and um, have you had any head trauma in the last 48 hours? Any injury to your head? Mm -mm, no, no, just, just pain. My head just hurts. Okay. Um, any loss of consciousness in the last 24 hours? Nope. Okay, any seizures? Nope. Um, fever above 102? No. Or 102 or above? Okay. Um, any unsteadiness on your feet or problems with walking or balance that you could, you know, fall from or have trouble getting around or using stairs? No. Okay. Um, any heart problems? No. Anything that would require cardiac monitoring? Okay. Mm -mm. Do you have any liver problems or disease like jaundice? No. Okay. Um, any, any serious stomach or GI problems like bleeding? No. Okay. Um, do you have any pancreatitis? No. Pancreas disease? Okay. Um, okay. And you mentioned both the headache and the hypertension. All right. Um, how troubled have you been by these medical problems in the past 30 days? Uh, well, I, I've been pretty troubled. Okay, would you say moderately, considerably, or extremely? Uh, considerably. Considerably, okay. Um, how important to you is treatment for these problems now? Uh, pretty important. Okay, also would you say considerably? Yes. Okay, um, do you need medical care or nursing care? Like, how, many, how much do you go to the doctor? Maybe once or twi twice a month I go see the doctor. You do, okay. Um, is, is there any way in which your physical health and your function could affect your ability to work on your substance problems? Hmm, I, I don't really know. It, it, it depends on, on what they want me to do. I don't think I can go without the medication for my headaches. Uh, and they, they haven't always liked that. Okay. All right, so there's some likelihood that it, it could be an issue. Okay. Um, I know that the nurse took your blood pressure out there and it was 130 over 95 and your heart rate was, uh, was uh, 86 beats a minute. Um, so I think we're pretty much finished with the medical stuff. Thank you for that information. And uh, I want to go on and ask you some things about your education and, and job history. Uh, how many years of education have you had? Well, I, had, I got my associate's degree. Okay, so that's two years after high school? Yep. Okay. And have you had any training or technical education? No, nope, that was it. Okay. Do you have a profession or a trade? Yeah, I'm an account manager at an insurance company. Okay. Do you have a driver's license? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, do you have a car that yeah. you're able to use? Yeah. I okay. do. I have a car. All right. Um, what's the longest you've been at a full-time job? How many, you know, like months or years? My longest job was five years. Okay. And your usual occupation? You mentioned insurance companies? I'm a claims reviewer at an insurance company. Okay. Um, tell me about alcohol and drug use at work. Does, does that potentially affect um, your drinking? Well, sometimes people go out for drinks after work. Uh-huh. And do you join them? Uh, yeah, yeah, I join them sometimes. Depends who's going. Okay. All right. 
Um, how about your financial support? Does anybody contribute to your financial support in any way? Well, my boyfriend pays, pays the rent. He, okay. Um, and is that the majority of your financial support? No, it's just a part of it. Okay. Um, and what's your usual employment pattern in the past three years? Oh, I always work full time. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and how many days were you paid in the last 30? So, uh, the whole month. So, I guess 30. Okay. So, your full-time job is, is uh, full salary So for the whole month. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much money did you receive from the following sources in the past 30 days? So, like employment. How much in the last 30 days? How much a month? Oh, uh, maybe about $3,500. Okay. And um, pension or benefits or Social Security? Do you get anything? Nope. That's it. Just okay. my, my salary. And you've worked so you haven't needed unemployment? No. Nope. Um, do you get money from your boyfriend or from anybody else, family? No. Nope. Or public assistance or welfare? No. Nope. Any illegal earnings? Uh, no. No. No illegal earnings. No. Not okay. into that. Um, do any other people depend on you for the majority of their food or shelter? Nope. Just me. Okay. And um, how many days have you experienced employment problems in the last month? No, nope, I'm pretty reliable. No problems. Okay. Um, so how troubled or bothered have you been by these employment problems in the past 30 days? Well, I'm kind of bothered because I'm worried my boss will freak out if I have to go into detox. And I, I can't, of course, tell him why I would be doing that. Okay. All right. I understand. And how important is counseling for these employment problems now? Uh, moderately, I guess. Moderately. Okay. All right. Um, so, it, is this really a threat to your job if you're going to need treatment now? Uh, well, I, I think it could be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for that information, and I think we're ready to go on. I'm going to now start to ask you questions about your drug use and alcohol use, if there has been any. Um, what substances do you use? What do you take? I know you were, you were referred here because of alcohol. Yeah, just, just alcohol. That's it. Okay. I'm going to ask you a bunch of other categories. Just let me know if any of these are things that you have ever used. Um, cocaine or stimulants, um, marijuana... Um, heroin, methadone, other opioids like narcotics, like pain medicines. Okay. You mentioned... Well, Oxycontin, but that's prescribed. Okay. All right. Um, uh, barbiturates or sleeping pills, sedatives or hypnotics? Well, I used to, to smoke... Okay, so tobacco, yes. Yeah, okay. but, but I gave that up like 15 years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, had you ever used solvents or inhalants? No. Okay. And um, any other drug of abuse that I haven't mentioned? No, I don't think so. Okay. Have you ever used more than one drug at a time? Well, I guess if you count alcohol as a drug with my Oxycontin... Yes, we do. Okay, so that's important. I'm glad you mentioned that. Okay. Um, now let me talk to you about your alcohol use. Um, when it comes to your use of alcohol, when's the last time you, you drank? Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's probably like last night, maybe midnight or so. Okay, so it's in the last day. And how many... Okay. And how many days did you use alcohol in the last 30 days? Mm, probably every day. I, I don't think I missed a day. Really? Okay. So, so 30 days of drinking. And, and for how long have you used alcohol in any amount? Here. Mm, probably 30 years, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, and obviously that was by drinking. And did you ever have a doctor tell you, oh, you should, you know, have some alcohol for your, you know, health or for any reason? Oh, you mean like to lower my cholesterol? 
Yeah. No. Okay. Um, did you ever use alcohol to the point of intoxication? Well, you could probably say that I do that every day. Really? Okay. Um, when was your last use of alcohol to the point of intoxication? Last night. Okay. Um, how many days have you drunk to the point of getting drunk in the last 30 days? I could say every day. Really? Okay. Um, and how long have you been using alcohol to get yourself drunk? Oh, probably since my 30s. So maybe like 20 years. 20 years? Okay. Um, so in the last year, I'm going to focus on that. Think about your use of alcohol, okay? Do you need to use more alcohol to get the same feelings you used to when you could use less? Or do you get less of a high when you use a certain amount now compared to what you used to use? Yeah. You know, okay. Sometimes I'll drink whiskey after my beers for just that reason. Oh, okay. Do you ever get physically sick when you stop drinking? I get bad shakes, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Do you sometimes use in order to prevent this from happening? I suppose so. I'm usually drinking, at least by lunch. Okay. And when you're using alcohol, do you ever feel that you don't stop when you want to or feel that you should stop? Yeah, all, all the time. Okay. And have you ever tried to cut down? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times. Yeah. Okay. I know it's hard. Um, does alcohol take up a lot of your time? I don't know, but I'm drinking from the time I finish work until the time I go to bed at night. On the weekends, it seems like I'm drinking all day and all evening, so I'm drinking a lot of the time. Okay. Do you find you're frequently drunk um, or sick, withdrawing? when you need to get things done at work? Uh, I only have a couple of beers at lunch during work, and I wouldn't let that interfere with my work, but at home it's probably really screwing up my relationship with my boyfriend, I guess. Okay. Um, and you're not in school at all. Do you ever drink in, in dangerous situations? Well, I, I never drink and drive. You don't? Okay. All right. Um, have you ever given up or cut back on any important activities because of your alcohol use? I don't think so. How about social activities? Oh, if that's what you mean. I, I really don't have much of a social life now. And uh, I gave up drawing and painting a long time ago. Okay. But in terms of, of your occupational activities, you're, you've been working steadily. Okay, great. Um, has alcohol ever caused you any other problems? Like, I'll just ask you, you can tell me if, if yes, family or friends. Well, your friends, your boyfriend you mentioned. My boyfriend wants to leave me, and once I got fired. You have, okay. Um, and with your health? Um, sure. I mean, it probably makes me more nervous. Can't be very good for my blood pressure, I don't think. Okay. And how about with the legal system? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so... You know that this has been affecting your emotions with anxiety, but you've continued to drink. Have you ever had DTs? I don't think that's ever happened. Okay. Um, have you had alcohol withdrawal seizures? No, I don't think I've had those. Okay. Could you estimate how much you've spent in the last 30 days on alcohol? Maybe 600, 800 bucks. Really? Okay. I'll take the average of that. 700. Okay. And how many days in the past 30 have you experienced alcohol problems? Probably every single one. All right. So 30 out of 30 days. Okay. Um, now on that same scale, you know, from not at all to moderately, considerably, extremely, how troubled or bothered have you been in the past 30 days by the alcohol problems? I'd say extremely troubled. Yeah. Okay. And how, how important is alcohol treatment for you now? Extremely important. Extremely important. Okay. All right. Um, so that's about what I wanted to ask you for alcohol for the moment. I want to s s 
settle into some opiate questions because you mentioned that you have taken some painkillers. Um, when was the last use of um, the Oxycontin? Took an Oxycontin last night, 20 milligrams, I think. Okay, so at this point that would be about 12 hours ago. Yeah. Um, and um, how many days did you use the Oxycontins in the last 30 days? Let's see, in the last two weeks I took them every day. Okay. Um, how long have you been using these kinds of opioid uh, painkillers? How many years? I'd say maybe the last 15 years. Okay. And um, you're, do you take them uh, as oral pills? Do you ever use them any other way? Uh, I've never done anything else, just swallowing pills. Okay, no needles, no crushing and snorting the pills? No. Nothing like that, okay. Were they prescribed always for you? Uh, almost always. But, but if I run out, I always pay back what I borrowed. Okay. Um, did you take, do you ever, you don't buy them on the street? Well, what I do is I get a regular prescription, but then I usually don't take it for a while, like for weeks at a time. But when my headaches get worse, then I'll start with what I should until they're, that isn't working. And then I just take more and then I run out. Then I have to stop because I don't want to see the doctor earlier than I'm supposed to. And that's when they cut you off. So I make sure that doesn't happen. All right, so there are times when you take more than prescribed, and then other times you don't take them at all. Okay. In the past year, think about your use of these other opiates. Um, it sounds like you need to use more other opiates, these, these uh, Oxycontins, to get the same feeling sometimes. You, you increase the dose. Do you ever get physically sick? When you stop using the um, opiates? I don't get sick, but my head hurts worse. Okay, so that would be a medical or physical <coughs> um, symptom. Okay. Do you sometimes use to prevent this? Sure. I mean, if I still have pills left. Okay. Um, when you're using your Oxycontin, do you ever feel that you don't stop when you want to or feel that you should stop using them? Yeah, all the time. You do? Okay. Have you ever tried to cut down? Uh, every few months or six, six weeks or so. Really? Okay. And do they take up a lot of your time? Just swallowing pills? That's not a lot of time, really. Okay. Do you find you're frequently using them and high or, or sick from withdrawing when you need to get things done at work or school or home? No, I mean, I don't use it to get high and I don't think I really have withdrawal. I just manage my headaches so I can think at work and get the job done. It's okay. not really dangerous. Okay. And you don't use them in situations that could become dangerous. Okay. Um, have you ever given up activities that are important to you because of your use of the opiates, like social activities or recreational or occupational? No. No. Okay. Um, any other problems? Like with family or friends, or your boyfriend, or your job? Any health problems? I don't think so. Legal problems? Nope. Or with your emotions? Nope. Okay. Okay. Have you used other opiates, um, uh, or the Oxycontins, um, even when you knew it caused a psychological problem or an illness or made them worse? Uh, I don't think so, because I don't think they do. That's okay. All right. Um, so how likely is it that you might relapse because of craving or need for opiates? Uh, I always drink more when I'm out of pills. You do? Okay. And does that happen, get, getting out of pills? So you could run out and then that would cause you to drink more? Yeah. Okay. Is that an extremely likely situation? 
the way things uh, are going? Yeah, I would with? say it is. Okay. All right, great. Um, now, I want to go back to alcohol briefly. Um, do you feel sick to your stomach at all? Have you vomited recently? I don't vomit, but I get queasy, even a bit now. Even now, okay. So you have some mild nausea, okay, but no vomiting. Um, I don't see any any goose flesh on your hands. Can you just hold your hand up like this for me? Okay, thank you. That's 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 great. Um, I noticed when I shook your hand when you came into the office that you, your palms were a little sweaty, um, and um, uh, I noticed your legs have been uh, jumping a little bit up and down, and your arms you seem to have a little tremor. Do you notice that? Um, no, I'm always a little bit restless, probably more now than other times. Okay. And your eyes seem to me to be a little bit teary. Um, you have a cold right now? You seem to be sniffling and you were coughing before. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit congested. You're congested, okay. Um, but I haven't noticed any yawning. Um, and do you have any pains in your lower abdomen? My stomach is turning a bit, but there's really no pain. Okay. Um, do you feel hot or cold right now? Not really, no. I feel normal. And do you have any muscle aches? Uh, aside from my headaches, no. Okay. Um, now let's see, have we talked about tobacco? You mentioned that you used to smoke. How long ago was that? Uh, haven't smoked for 15 years. Happy about that. Okay, great. Um, when, uh, when you uh, smoked, how many years had you smoked? From college until I was 35, so 17 years. Okay. And um, how did you use tobacco and other nicotine products? Did you ever chew? No, just, just smoked. Okay, just smoked. Okay. Um, and obviously these were never prescribed. Um, so in the past year you haven't smoked, which is great. Um, when you had been smoking during those 17 years, had you tried to cut down ever? Well, yeah, um, for a couple of years. Okay. And um, was it taking up a lot of your time back then? No, not really. Okay. Did it interfere with things at work or school or home? Uh, right. It's not a factor. Okay. And um, did you cut back in activities, important activities, because of your nicotine use? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, did it cause any health problems? Family problems, friends problems, job problems? Uh, I, I would say no. Okay. Um, and did you keep smoking for a while even when you knew it uh, could cause a physical illness or make it worse? Yeah, well, yeah, because it was hard to give it up. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, now um, let me ask you about some of the consequences of your use of the pills. Um, how much do you spend, let's say, in the past 30 days um, on the Oxycontin pills? Nothing, except for the $20 copay. Because okay. my insurance pays for it. Okay. And um, how many days in the past 30 would you say you've had drug problems? Um, maybe five. Okay. How troubled or bothered have you been in the past 30 days by these drug problems? Just a little. Okay. Uh, how important is the treatment for your drug problem? Well, pretty important. 
Okay, would you say slightly, moderately, considerably, or extremely? Slightly. Slightly. Okay. That's fine. Um, have you had any treatment for alcohol or drug abuse in the past? Yeah, I mean, I've had alcohol detox probably seven or eight times. Okay. Anything for drug problems? Just no, alcohol? it's just, just for alcohol, not for drugs. Okay. Um, seven or eight times. Okay, so let's say eight times. And um, how many of these times were only detoxification? Uh... I think they were. It was only. It was only for drug, for alcohol detox. Okay. Um, did you usually leave detox before you were advised to in the past? Uh, mm, I didn't. I didn't leave before I was advised to. No. Okay. And after detox, have you usually entered continued treatment? No, I, I usually usually don't do that. Something stops me, I guess. Okay. Um, how many days have you been treated in an outpatient setting for alcohol or drugs in the past 30 at all? Have you had any treatment? E even AA or NA? No, I haven't had treatment. I really don't like those meetings. Okay. In the past 90 days, have you relapsed after being discharged from a treatment program? No, but I probably should have been in some kind of treatment. Okay. Um, and you haven't just successfully completed a treatment because you haven't been in treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what substance would you say is the major problem? Uh, definitely alcohol. Yeah, alcohol, yeah. And how long was your last period of voluntary abstinence from this? Maybe three months. Three months? Okay. Um, and... Um, how many months ago did this abstinence end? Maybe three months ago. About, okay, three months ago you had a three-month abstinence ending at that point. And how many times have you overdosed on drugs or alcohol? I'd say never. Never? Okay. Um, so, if you would, imagine yourself in the environment in which you previously used drugs or uh, alcohol. We can talk about the alcohol in your case. If you were living in this environment today where you drink, What's the likelihood that you would use, that you would drink? I'm sure I'll drink if I stay there, but I can't let that happen. Okay, so would you say extremely likely? Yeah. Okay. How strong, rate how strong your urges are for, for alcohol when something in the environment reminds you of it. Oh, really strong. All I want to do is get a beer. Okay, so would you say considerably or, or extremely? Well, it's considerable now, but we'll get extreme later. Okay, how strong is your desire to use any drug right now? Well, considerable, at least for a drink. Okay, but how about for a drug, like your Oxycontin? Uh, yeah, it's pretty strong. Okay, would you say considerably? Not quite Yeah, when, when my headaches are bad, yeah, it's considerable. Okay. Um, have your addiction symptoms increased recently? Yeah, they definitely have. How would you say they have? Well, the headaches have gotten worse and also the craving for beer. Okay. All right. And you mentioned something about whiskey before. So you've added whiskey to beer. Um, yeah, I've, I've added whiskey to the six packs I've been drinking. Okay, so whiskey on top of the six packs mm -hmm. of beer. Okay, do you feel you're likely to continue using or continue drinking? Well, I don't think I'll be able to stop drinking or using the pills. Even today? Even, yeah. Even today, okay. Um, do you have any concerns about pursuing treatment? Not about detox, but I have trouble continuing after that, and I'm, I'm too nervous to sit in those AA meetings. Okay. Um, all right. Um, how do you think treatment will help? Well, I'm hoping it, uh, 
everything, like my head and the rest of me, will get better. My boyfriend won't kick me out. Okay. All right. So you have some sense of, of what might be helpful. Okay. And what might cause you to relapse in the future? Well, if my boyfriend throws me out or I get fired, that would. Okay. So you have some real risks and the timing is, is coming up. How do you plan to prevent relapses, let's say after detox? Well, I, I just need to stop drinking. Stay sober for a change. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just make some ratings here, okay? Um, and um, consider, you know, how you view your addiction problems and um, your readiness for treatment. Um, and it sounds like things are on the increase in terms of your problems. All right, let's take a little break and give you a chance if you want to go to the water fountain or the bathroom or anything? Yeah, that would be good. Okay, sure, that's fine. Go, go ahead. Um, Ms. Jones, I'd like to ask you some questions about your legal situation. And I know you mentioned that you don't have much going on in this department. Um, but let me just ask for sure, was this admission or visit prompted or suggested by the criminal justice system by any chance? No, it was uh, prompted by my boyfriend. Okay. And what factors might help you to stay in treatment? Well, if he doesn't kick me out, that would help. Okay. And you, do you have any probation or parole status these days? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Okay. How many times in your life have you been arrested or charged with, and I'll list a bunch of criminal offenses. You just tell me if, stop me if any of these are a yes, okay? Um, have you ever been arrested in your life for shoplifting or vandalism? Um, well, I've, I've never been arrested for anything. For anything. Parole violations, drug charges, forgery. No. Burglary, larceny, weapons, robbery, nothing like that. Okay. Um, um, how about assault? Um, no, no. Okay. And I'll just ask you, prostitution, contempt of court, anything? Mm -mm. Okay. How many times in your life have, been char have you been charged with just disorderly conduct or being drunk in public? Well, I never drive when drinking, so, and I've never been arrested, so nothing. Okay, not driving. All right. How about major driving violations like reckless driving or speeding or driving without your license? No. Nope. Okay. So you've never been incarcerated, you mentioned. Um, and there's been nothing in the past 30 days. And you're not awaiting any kind of charges. In the last 30 days, there's been no illegal activities or anything with... Um, selling drugs for profit. You mm -hmm. mentioned you borrowed, but you don't. Um, you, you give back what you've borrowed. Okay. How serious do you feel legal problems are these days? Not, not at all. Not at all. Okay. And so counseling isn't important for legal problems. No. Okay. All right. So we can move on from that. And I, I want to ask you another category of questions, and this has to do with your family and your social history. So, for instance, you mentioned to me that your marital status is divorced. And how long have you been divorced? Mm, Ten years. Okay. And are you satisfied with that situation? Well, I, I'm, I'd say in general I'm pretty unhappy. Okay. Um, what's your usual living arrangements? You're living with your boyfriend right now? Yeah, for two years. And then I lived with another man before him. Okay. Um, 
And how long have you lived in these arrangements? Two years, you said? Yeah. Okay. With him. All right. And are you satisfied with, with the situation living with him? Well, I would be um, if, you know, he, he would want me to stay there, but he wants me out. He does? Okay. So that's, that's not great. Um, how about, is there alcohol and drug use in your current living situation? Well, he doesn't drink, but he won't stop me from doing it. Okay. All right. Um, and with whom do you spend most of your free time? Mm, I'd say mostly me. I'm by myself. Are you satisfied with spending your free time that way? No. No, I, I'm kind of miserable about it. Okay. Tell me about alcohol and drug use in your free time activities. I don't really have activities. So maybe that's a kind of a setup for my drinking. Okay, so you don't have a lot of structure. How would you deal with any problems in your free time that put you at risk for relapse? I, I really don't know. Okay. Do you have any close friends? No, nope, just my boyfriend. Just your boyfriend, okay. Um, tell me about alcohol and drug use among friends. Well, I drink after work with coworkers, but I wouldn't say they're friends. Okay. And that happens periodically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it's either drinking after work with the people at work who aren't really good friends, or you spend time on your own, but there isn't much structure going on. Right. Would you say that's the case? Okay. Yeah. Um, how many days in the past 30 have you had serious conflicts with your family? Mm, probably a dozen times. Okay. And are those family members? Uh, or other people? So let's not count your boyfriend as family. Okay, so, well, my parents are dead. Okay. And, I mean, you know, the rest of my family, I don't talk to them that much. Okay, so do you have serious conflicts with them? No. All right, but with your boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. Um, how many days in the past 30 would you say you've had serious conflict with your boyfriend? You know, probably 12, a dozen times. A dozen times, okay. Um... And have you had significant periods in which you've experienced serious problems with your mother or father? Well, my parents are dead. Okay. But before you lost them, did, were there significant periods where you had significant problems with them? I, I don't remember. I, I think they were okay. I mean, you know, we weren't that close, but I don't remember significant problems. All right. Were siblings? Uh... No, I don't, I don't really talk to them that much, but, you know, we get along okay. Okay. Um, and your, your partner, you told me, yes. And how about children? Do you have any children? No, never had kids. I did want to, but when my ex and I broke up, that was the end of that idea. Okay. And problems, significant problems with other family members or close friends or neighbors or coworkers? I, I get along with people in general. I mean, I had a couple of bosses who fired me for drinking. Okay, so we'd say yes to that. Um, and um, in the past month, it sounds like you've had some serious stress with your boyfriend. Yeah. Um, how about with the coworkers? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay. Now, I want to ask you some questions about abuse. Have you been emotionally abused during the past 30 days? No. Or how about physically abused? No, I wouldn't put up with that. Or sexually abused? No, no, my, my boyfriend's a good guy. Okay, who's the person or persons with whom you've had contact in the past four months and who've, who's been most important to you? Well, it would be John, my boyfriend. Okay. Um, have you neglected or abused John or any other family members recently? 
Well, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm always nice to him, but I wouldn't say I abuse him. Okay. Um, and how much help will he need to assist in your treatment? Is he prepared to get involved in your treatment? I guess it depends on what I do. He, he might stick with me. Okay. So it's not clear, but he would definitely need some help. Um, what's the likelihood that you could cause harm to him or neglect him or any others? Well, I wouldn't say harm. I'm, I'm not going to harm anyone, but I wouldn't say I'm going to support either. Okay. What's the risk that you could be hurt or victimized by somebody else? Oh, I wouldn't say there's a risk of that. Okay. Um, are you able to locate resources in the community and get yourself to them safely? Yeah, you know, I, I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, so if we think about the, the family problems, um, have you been troubled or bothered by family problems at all in the last 30 days? No, family really isn't a big issue in my life right now. Okay, but how about social problems, like with John? Yeah, yeah, a lot. I feel pretty guilty about it. You do. Would you say considerably or extremely? Extremely. Okay. And how important is treatment for family problems, not John? Well, uh, I don't, you know, my folks are gone, so it's not really an issue. All right, but how about how important is treatment for, for your social problems, like with John? Uh, it's really important. Okay, I understand. So would we say considerably or extremely? Extremely. Okay. Um, is there somebody who would be available to you for the next seven days to re remind you about medication, contacting your treatment team, helping get you there, making sure you get to places? Is it, do you have somebody in your life who would do that? Would John do that for you? No, I don't think so. Okay. So, do you have anybody who could continuously monitor you on an outpatient basis? No. I mean, it's usually just me, but I don't even think I would count on me. I understand. Um, okay. So, um, let me just make a couple notes here, and then we're going to move on, and the next section um, is some questions about your psychological history, okay? Um, you have not been in a hospital for medical reasons except for the gallbladder. Have you been treated? In in a hospital for psychological or emotional problems? No, never. All right, how about as an outpatient or a private patient for psychological or emotional problems? Well, I mean, I think I've got like a lot of anxiety. It's pretty bad. Okay, but it sounds like you haven't had treatment for it. No. Okay, let me ask you about some other emotional problems. Tell me if you've had any of these, panic disorder, agoraphobia, post-traumatic stress disorder, social phobia, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, eating disorders, depressive disorder, mania or bipolar, schizophrenia, borderline or personality disorders. Have you ever been told of having a diagnosis of any of these or had emotional problems of any of the kind that I've mentioned besides the anxiety? Nope. Okay, do you receive a pension for a psychiatric disability? No, I totally support myself. Yeah, and that's what you told me about medical problems too, okay. Um, have you had a significant period in your life in which you experienced serious depression or the blues or hopelessness? Yeah, I was pretty down when my marriage fell apart. I'd say maybe even like suicidal. Okay, all right. Um, how about in the last month? Uh, I'm feeling pretty down about what's going on, but it's not like it was when my marriage ended. 
Okay, is it serious hopelessness or depression? Sometimes, yeah. Okay. And in the last 24 hours? Yeah, I, I felt kind of somewhat depressed. Okay. And was this related to alcohol or drug use? Well, yeah, definitely from drinking. Okay. Okay. Um, have you had a lack of interests or inability to feel normal pleasure from activities in your lifetime? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not excited about things. Okay. Um, that would be currently. But how about in your lifetime? Have you ever had any severe lack of interests or periods where you couldn't even feel pleasure? Yeah, I have. Okay. Did that relate to your divorce? Probably, yeah. Okay. Um, and how about in the last month? Yeah, I, in the last month, you know, I'd say it's been really rough. Okay. And the last 24 hours? Uh, yeah, it's been bad. Would you say slightly, moderately, or worse than that? Uh, maybe considerably. Okay. And is this related to using the alcohol? Yeah, yeah. And if I try to stop drinking, it gets worse. Okay. All right. Um, in your lifetime, have you had problems, serious problems, with poor appetite or overeating? Yeah, well, I'm getting a little heavy from the drinking, so, yeah, it's a, it's a problem. Okay. And would you say... It's not not at all, is it? Slightly? Maybe, yeah, slightly. How about in the last month? Uh, yeah. And, and now, in the last 24 hours? Yeah. Okay. And is that also, you, you mentioned, related to your drinking? I think so, yeah. Okay. Do you feel bad? I mean, have you felt bad about yourself, like a failure, or like you've let others down? Yeah, I definitely feel that. Okay. Considerably or extremely? Uh, extremely. Okay. Um, in the last month? Yeah, definitely. In the last 24 hours? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Is this also related to your use of alcohol? Yeah. Okay. Um, in your lifetime, have you had periods where you had serious problems, like moving slowly or speaking slowly compared to others? No, I don't think so, no. Okay. Or how about serious anxiety or tension or worry? Well, yeah, I, I get I get pretty pretty anxious. Okay. Would you say extremely or considerably? Considerably. Okay. How about in the last month? Yeah, I'd say considerably. Okay. And in the last twenty four hours also? Yeah, a lot a lot of times in the last twenty four hours, yeah. Okay. And so, and now even. Yeah. And is that also related to your alcohol? I think so. Okay. Is it more when you're not able to drink, like you haven't been drinking today? Yeah, I think it gets worse. Okay. Um, how about, have you ever had periods in your life where you've had an anxiety t attack, a sudden feeling of fear or panic? Uh, I don't know if it's an anxiety attack. I don't think so. Okay. Um, um, how about periods in your life um, where you've had uh, fidgeting or so much restlessness that it's hard to sit still? Well, if I run out of alcohol, I, I have that. Okay. Um, and in the last month? Yeah, I've, I've had that a few times. And in the last 24 hours? Yep. Yeah. Would you say that that's severe? Is it extreme, considerable, moderate, or slightly? Extreme. Okay. Um, and this is related to, what do you think, the alcohol withdrawal? Well, right, yeah, wanting a drink, like, I, I'd like to have one right now. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay, and I'm, I'm glad you're here so that we can be working on this. Um, have you had periods in your life where you've had serious difficulties falling asleep or 
or staying asleep or sleeping too much? Well, it's hard to say between the alcohol and the pills, but yeah, I, I, I can wake up and not get to sleep or sleep too much. Yeah. Okay. In the last month? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and in the last 24 hours? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And would you say that's slight, moderate, considerable, or extreme? Maybe considerable. Okay. And is it related, do you think, to your pills or your alcohol use? I think it's related to the alcohol use. I don't know about the pills. Okay. Do um, you think it's related to getting drunk, or do you think it's related to the alcohol wearing off? Mm. Probably both. Okay. Um, have you had periods in your life where you've had serious problems from getting tired more easily than the average person or having little energy? Probably, yeah. Okay. Slightly, moderately? Uh, you know, maybe considerably. Considerably? Okay. In the last month? Yeah. Um, and in the last 24 hours? Uh, yeah. Okay. And is this related to either using alcohol or coming off of alcohol or the pills? Uh, it's hard to say. I, I think it's also my mood. Okay. Um, how about problems with excessive muscle tension or aches or soreness? No, I don't think that's really been a problem. Or re recurring, persisting thoughts, not just worries, but thoughts that intrude and make you feel bad? Mm, you know, I'm anxious, but I don't really think I have that. Okay. Or how about, have you had serious problems feeling compelled to do repetitive, excessive behaviors or th repetitive or excessive thoughts, like thoughts that you had to prevent something that would be upsetting? No, you'd like that OCD stuff. Yeah, anything like that? No. Okay. Um, how about feelings of suspiciousness or paranoia that people were out to get you or against you? Well, I guess I was starting to get paranoid when my divorce started up, but generally no. Um, I worry about John, but that's like a real thing to worry about. Yeah, I understand. Um, so in your lifetime you have had that, and was that a severe thing or was it slight? Uh, when your divorce was happening? Uh, that was pretty significant, yeah. Okay, so would you, would you say moderately? Maybe extremely. Okay. Um, and how about in the last month? Uh, well, yeah, I've been worried about We're, my whole Okay, my whole worry situation. is okay, but um, that's real, as opposed to, have you had paranoia? That no, was unreal? no. Okay. And when you were having, um, when your divorce was happening, were you actually having paranoia that was not real? No, but I was just paranoid that, you know, my life was going to fall apart. Maybe that's not what you mean, but it did. Yeah. So there was reality to that. Right. All right. So uh, let's say slightly, but um, not uh, an actual paranoia of things that were unreal. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, nobody could hold that against you that you've, you know, you felt paranoid that your life was going to change. That, that's understandable. Um, and how about recurrent thinking about other things that were not true in your lifetime? Have you had serious problems with that? No, i got enough to worry about of things that are true. Yeah, okay. How about hallucinations? Uh, I haven't had those, no. All right. And, and hearing things, smelling things, or feeling things that were not there? No. Okay. Um, how about flashbacks? I don't think I've ever had that. Okay. Or trouble understanding or concentrating or remembering things. No. Um, amazingly, my brain's still okay. Okay. Have you had problems becoming easily annoyed or irritable with people? No, I just kind of retreat into myself. Okay. Or trouble controlling 
violent behavior. No, I just get quiet and down. Or urges to hurt or fight with people or damage their property? No, I'm not one of those angry drunks. Okay. Have you had problems holding on to other relationships? Problems with your, trouble with your attitude? Well, I guess relationships. That's the story of my life. Okay. So was that an extremely problematic thing in your life? Yeah, extremely. Okay. How about in the last month? Yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. It's probably at a crisis point. It is, okay. In the last 24 hours, this is mm -hmm. a bother right now. Okay. And you think that that is related to alcohol use? Yeah, totally. Totally, okay. Otherwise, I know we would be fine. You do, okay. Have you had serious thoughts of suicide, that you'd be better off dead or wanting to hurt yourself in your lifetime? Well, when my marriage was falling apart, yeah. Okay. Was that moderate, considerable, or extreme? It's considerable. Okay. Have you had any of those feelings, Joanne, in the last month? Uh, well, not really, no. Okay. Or any thoughts of how you would hurt yourself? Well, I threatened it, but never really, never really did anything. When was that, that you threatened? Around my divorce. Okay, so in your lifetime, you threatened. Okay. Um, and how about uh, in the last month? No. No? Okay. Did you ever attempt suicide in your life? No. I just talked about it. Okay. Um, and do you take any prescribed medicine other than the Oxycontin that you told me about for psychological or emotional problems? No, never have. Uh, in your whole lifetime, you never have? Nope. Okay. Um, are you getting any psychiatric care now? Well, I see a psychiatrist for my headaches, and he prescribes medicine, but um, he has no idea about my drinking, and he doesn't know how I use the pills, so I hold off for weeks and then take them in that cycle of using more and more until I crash. And I, he's not really interested in talking to me anyway, so I haven't told him about John or, you know, all the other things going on. And you haven't told him about your anxiety problems, and he's not treating you really for those. Right. Okay. Um, and so the emotional problems you've talked about, some of the mood things and the anxiety and the restlessness, um, do they seem to occur mostly when you're using alcohol or withdrawing from alcohol or withdrawing from the Oxycontin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do. Okay. All right, so let's think about all of these psychological and emotional things you have going on. How much um, have you been troubled by these psychological problems in the past 30 days? Uh, pretty troubled. Would you say extremely? Yeah. Okay. And in the past month, the past 30 days, how many days have you experienced these kinds of problems? Um... Every day. Okay, every day in the past 30 days? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how difficult have these problems made it for you to work or take care of things at home or get along? Well, I keep doing stuff, but I'd say it's made it pretty difficult. All right, so you've been functioning. It's not like you can't care for yourself or be safe. Right. Um, but um, would you say... Moderately or considerably difficult? I'd say considerably. Okay. And how important is counseling for these psychological problems? Well, I guess it's really important, very important, if I'm going to hold on to my life and not have it go down the tubes. Okay. Um, and do you want care for both your psychological problems and your substance dependence problem? Well, they're kind of interrelated, right? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like they are. So, okay. Um, and how might your emotional problems affect your recovery, your efforts in recovery? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm afraid of not drinking, and I'm afraid of drinking. Yeah, okay.
So um, it's certainly distracting, and it could could sounds like it could really hinder your participation, especially if things get worse with your boyfriend. Uh -huh. um, how difficult is it for you to take care of your emotional problems? Mm, I mean, I'm managing. So, I guess I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. um, would you be able to handle medicines if you were given medicines for your emotional problems? I would think so, but, you know, I haven't tried it. Okay. And... Um, have you used counseling before? No, not really. Just, you know, detox. Mm -hmm. And AA, you said you wouldn't go to? Well, I, I didn't really like the meetings I went to. Okay, and you, you've mentioned that you get very anxious. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so it sounds like there'd be some difficulty with some of the things that they might recommend. Do you usually find you can't wait for things that you really want badly? Uh, I'm not impulsive. Okay, fine. Is it hard for you to work at things that will only pay off in the future? No. I mean, I wait for paychecks and I've gotten bonuses, so I wouldn't say so. Okay, so you have patience for mm -hmm. your paycheck and for your bonuses. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, great. So, I'm going to make a few ratings. Um, and, um, this will just take me another minute. And I appreciate your patience. Um, I can't really tell right now from this information of whether you have another psychiatric diagnosis, but the anxiety is definitely a the type of issue that we'll have to consider um, as we continue to evaluate you. So, I certainly think that on the psychological side of things, even though a lot of this is stimulated by your drinking, that you have some moderate problems that we should explore. Um, And I don't really know if you, if you were in your apartment um, and in your job, whether you would be able to access and continue with all the treatments that we might recommend. So I want to think about that. But clearly you have been functioning, even though you have a lot of difficulties. So we're getting near the end of the interview, and I only have a few more questions that I need to ask you about. Okay. Um, in the past week, what has your mood been like? Uh, I'd say I've been pretty down. Okay. Um, And, and you do seem kind of down if I, if I look at how you carry yourself. So I can understand 
that that's how you're feeling. Have you been um, sad or depressed every day, all day? Have you been crying at all? Mm, I'd say, yeah, pretty sad. I mean, I don't, I'm not a big crier, but, you know, sometimes I cry when I'm alone. Okay. Have you been especially critical of yourself this past week, feeling you've done things wrong or let others down or guilty? Yeah, I feel, I feel guilty a lot. And that's probably one of the things that makes me want to drink because that takes away the guilt a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've brought this on yourself or you're punished by your addiction? Uh, well, I guess I brought it on myself. I can't blame anybody else. and. I don't know if the addiction is a punishment, but it's baggage. Okay. Um, how have you been spending your free time this past week? Have you had any interest in doing things? Uh, have you felt you've had to push yourself? Or have you just stopped doing things that you used to? Yeah, I mean, I used to like to ride my bike and I used to get together with my girlfriend and take walks, and I, I don't do that anymore. I really don't feel like doing anything. Watch TV sometimes, hang out with John, and, you know, that's about it. Okay, and how's your energy been this past week? Have you felt tired all the time, muscle aches, back aches, headaches? Headaches you mentioned, yes. How about other things? Uh... You know, it's hard to get up in the morning, but I do, so I give myself credit for that. But it's like dragging a ball in a chain. Okay. Okay. Um, have you been feeling especially tense or irritable this past week, or worrying a lot about little unimportant things? I guess I, I worry about things that I think are kind of important. Maybe not to other people, but, you know, keeping my job and... Not having a place to live and not having a relationship, being isolated. Yeah. My health. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, Joanne, you you strike me as speaking uh, a little slowly, sort of um, coming out with these things a little sluggishly. Do you feel that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's hard to sit here and answer all these questions, and I look at it from your seat, and I seem like a pretty sad sack, so. Okay. All right. Thanks. I appreciate you making all the effort. Um, we're, we're finishing up now. Um, And I'll just make a, a last few notes. Um, are there any levels of care, any types of care that um, you feel you would not be willing to accept? Any kind of treatments that you feel you would not be willing to go into? Well, I don't know exactly what you mean, but I really don't like hospitals. But I guess I'll do what I have to do. Okay. So hospitals could be an issue. Okay. because we have a whole range of treatments available to you in, in our community. So pretty much anything that you would need, we would have. Um, and now that we've pretty much finished the whole interview, I just want to ask you one last question, and that is, given how this interview has gone and the questions that I've posed to you. Um, if you had a friend who was in similar need of help, 
um, would you recommend our program to him or to her? Well, what I have to go on is you asked me probably more than I've ever been asked when I have entered treatment programs, so other treatment programs, so I guess that's a pretty good sign. So I just hope the treatment is, is good. So uh, yeah, I, I think probably I would. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, so we are finished, and um, what I'm going to do is take all of these uh, results and um, work with the team to figure out what's the best recommendation we can offer you. So I'll ask you to wait in the uh, waiting room and uh, it'll take about 15 minutes and then we're going to get back together and we're going to tell you what we think might be the best way to get started, okay? Alright, sounds good. Alright, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you.